bienvenidos. Hola, buenas noches. Buenas noches desde Puerto Rico. Boquerón, Puerto Rico. We are on the West Coast, coming at you live. So, if we're coming through, we still have this kind of new setup. Can you just send us real quick a thumbs up or some sort of confirmation so that we know that we're actually coming at you and not just talking mindlessly <laughs> into the camera? Thanks for joining us. Are we getting any sort of confirmation here? Uh, I think so. It's got okay. people watching. Okay, <laughs> I think we're good then. Cool. Well, welcome guys. Uh, thanks for joining us on the, the live video tonight. We have a few things, various things we want to talk about tonight. And um, we switched the day we're doing the live video. Hopefully we can uh, stay a little more consistent, but we really wanted to get out the last two videos before we did another live stream, so thanks for joining us. Alright, do you want to start? See, we're going to start with um, some, something we think is worth mentioning. Now that we are here in Puerto Rico, does it mean that we're only going to cover um, things about Puerto Rico? Does it, mean, does it mean that we're only going to talk about Puerto Rican Spanish or things to do and see here in Puerto Rico? The, the answer to that question is a big fat no. Mai's from Mexico. We've spent a lot of time in Mexico together, so my Spanish is Mexicanized, and that's not going to change. I'm not going to just start speaking like they do in Puerto Rico here, even though sometimes it's kind of fun to uh, attempt to uh, mimic their accent here. But this channel is all about sharing the culture, traditions, and language of all Spanish-speaking countries. Not just Mexico, not just Puerto Rico. We're going to keep moving. There's other places we're going to go and visit. Um, as we mentioned before, if you've, if you've seen our other live videos, we talked a little bit about why we're here, and maybe we need to do a whole separate video just on that. Whenever he wants to practice. 
just trying to practice their English with you. little bar on the side of a road um, something called a chinchorro those places usually have a lot of like the street food um, that you can find everywhere here in Puerto Rico like the um, sorullitos we had like the corn stick sticks I don't know mm -hmm. how to describe them yeah. or um, the tostones which is the uh, fried plantain like uh, in like a little round fry thing <laughs> tostones yeah. uh, bacalaito which is another fried thing uh, made with um, bacalao is um, codfish I think it's codfish uh -huh. so yes lots of um, street food we try to eat um, as much as we can but a lot of the things that people eat here in Puerto Rico have meat in them or fish so we're like mm. <laughs> yeah we're we're mostly vegan and uh, we always say mostly because sometimes we're in a situation where we can be a little flexible um, especially traveling and trying to yeah. to show you guys um, the things that you can have here but but we put a hard line in the sand of about meat we just don't eat any sort of meat and here in, yeah, in fish which you have to specify when you're in a Spanish-speaking country oftentimes people don't know what vegetarian means especially don't know what vegan means so we're gonna do a video about that someday too though mm -hmm. how to how to ask for food vegetarian or vegan food yeah yeah so looks like everything sounds better okay uh, sorry about that guys yes. we're I just switched microphones so this is working now thanks for bearing with us Okay, so we were talking about the phrases you can use when people want to, um, when you want to practice your Spanish with a Spanish speaker and they keep answering to you in English because that's happened many, many times here in Puerto Rico to you and also in Mexico. So something you can say is, ¿Podemos hablar español? ¿Podemos hablar español? Let's see. Let's see if you can um, type the translation for that. Let's see who who's the fastest uh, at saying what that means. Podemos hablar español? What does that mean? And then we have another thing you can say. Estoy aprendiendo español. Estoy aprendiendo español. ¿Te molesta? Si cambiamos a español, te molesta si cambiamos a español. That's another thing you can say. Mm -hmm. um, what else can you say? I have it here. One more. Quiero mejorar mi español. ¿Me puedes ayudar? Quiero mejorar mi español. ¿Me puedes ayudar? And that's, I want to improve my Spanish. Can you help? Mm -hmm. And I need to be using these a lot more here because right away when people see me, if they speak English, even just a little English, 
they're dead set on speaking English with me. And I get that people here probably also want to want to practice their English, but it can be a little frustrating when um, the conversation becomes uh, a situation where I'm speaking all Spanish and they're speaking all English. <laughs> so it's a little little tricky. Yeah, yeah. So I so the first phrase I said podemos hablar español means can we speak Spanish? Podemos hablar español. Can we speak Spanish? Muy bien. Melier, I think you were the first one to um, Melier. translate Good it. Good job. And then, estoy aprendiendo español. ¿Te molesta si cambiamos a español? That means I'm learning Spanish. Would it bother you if we switch to Spanish? Did anybody got that one? Podemos hablar español. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and then the other one you said it. Yeah, um, I cheated. I jumped ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Quiero mejorar mi español. Me puedes ayudar. I want to improve my Spanish. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are three phrases that you can use when you are in that situation, um, which happens a lot. So Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it really does here. It really <laughs> does. I'd say even more so than... than some touristy places in Mexico, which is cool because a lot of people here are bilingual. Like they're really good in, or equally good in both languages, mm -hmm. which is something I strive for, but it's, it's a long path. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about our last two videos and then tease some upcoming videos. Right, Mai? Yeah, Please. first we talk a little bit about the videos we're going to I just, um, when we were having trouble with the audio, I was um, telling you guys that we are thinking about working on a video to um, cover the differences that we have noticed between Mexican Spanish and Puerto Rican Spanish. Like, for example, we have um, an example that we a word that we learned right away the first time we were here in Puerto Rico was China. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means in Puerto Rican Spanish? I don't know if we have talked about this in other videos. I don't think so. China. China. What do you think that means in Puerto Rican Spanish? Do you know? Might not be what you expect. Mm -hmm. So we learned this word um, probably the first time we went to a restaurant here in Puerto Rico last time we were here we were looking at the menu and it was the drinks wasn't it yeah and in the drink menu we saw jugo de china so if you translate that like the literal translation is like china china juice, juice or chinese juice or chinese juice yeah and we were like Jugo de China? What is that? <laughs> yeah. And it's orange juice. Orange. Naranja. Here in Puerto Rico, they, they call oranges chinas. And the, the story behind that is very uh, interesting and funny. Do you want to tell it? Yeah. So apparently when oranges started coming here, they showed up in boxes that said China. On, on the outside, China, right? The oranges coming from China to Puerto Rico, which seems like quite a ways for oranges to come, don't you think? But they came <laughs> in boxes that said China, and the locals read it as China, um, which would be how you'd say China in, in Spanish, China. And so everyone just called them Chinas. Yeah, so, so we had no idea, you know? First time in a restaurant, just yeah. looking at the drink menu and you see, china juice you're like what so we had to ask and they were like yeah orange yeah <gasps> ah. <laughs> so we're looking at doing a video comparing spanish from mexico or probably spanish mostly from the the rest of the world compared to puerto rico mm -hmm. and so if you guys are interested in that let us know give us a thumbs up or, or say yes i want to learn some interesting puerto rico words so I wrote it there. Yeah. Um, and another video we are going to be recording too, we're probably going to record both of them at the same time, is 
things you didn't know about Puerto Rico. Yeah, and there's a number of really interesting things about Puerto Rico that a lot of people don't don't know. And mm -hmm. one is that Puerto Rico Puerto Rican residents cannot vote for president. And it kind of takes uh, probably one bit of information before that because not a lot of people, not everyone knows that Puerto Rico is part of the United States. So as part of the United States, um, residents of Puerto Rico cannot vote for president, including now myself. And when my becomes a citizen, as long as we're residents of Puerto Rico, also cannot vote for president. So. And that I learned today. I, I always thought that yes, Puerto Ricans, so people who are born in the island here, couldn't vote for president. And I thought, oh, okay, well, it's a territory, blah, blah, blah. But then today, when we were doing the outline for the video, and he was, um, he was saying, yeah, like people from Puerto Rico can vote. And that also includes me when, when we can't vote. Yeah, that right. you can't vote. And I'm like, what? But you were not born here. Right. So just for being a resident, yeah. you can't vote. It's not the fact, yeah. it's not being Puerto Rican that makes it so you can't vote. It's where you reside. Mm -hmm. And as a resident of Puerto Rico, whether you're born here or not, you cannot vote for president. Mm -hmm. You can move to New York or Florida or, or Minnesota and no problem. You can mm -hmm. vote for president again. So. So that's going to be an interesting one too. Um, so yeah, those are the two upcoming videos we have. Um, we're planning yeah. right now. We just wanted to recap a couple of our last videos if you caught them. Um, the Bio Bay video. This was a long time in the making. We actually recorded this video a year and a half ago when we were in Puerto Rico. So this is pre-Maria. and. I just wanted to let everyone know from everything we've read, the Bio Bay is fully recovered from the hurricane. So you can come to Puerto Rico and experience what we experienced uh, in Vieques, probably the most beautiful tiny little island I've seen in my life. Not that I've been in a lot of tiny islands, <laughs> but uh, Puerto Rico itself is beautiful. But the island of Vieques, they call it Isla Nena. And little girl. Little island. girl island, <laughs> and I, I can see it. It's like the the little sister of Puerto Rico because it kind of has the same form. It's just much much smaller. It's mm -hmm. like less than a fifth the mm -hmm. size of the mainland of Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Just a gorgeous island, and there they have the brightest bio bay in the world. And there's only five of them. Puerto Rico has three. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn more about that experience, we wrote up a blog post that we have the link in the description. You can learn how you can get there, how you can see the Bio Bay, different tour companies, where we stayed. A bunch of information that's not in the video. And of course, we have the video there in the blog post as well. Mm -hmm. Another video, uh, the, the last one we posted was the zip line, the ah. Tirolesa at the Adventure Park, El Toro Verde. Yeah. And this, he went on. <laughs> yeah, this we recorded before Jimmy Fallon. If you guys saw Jimmy Fallon's video, he was here in Puerto Rico about a month ago. Uh, we went before he came here, and we really wanted to get the video out uh, when they when he released his video because uh, I thought he seemed maybe a little over exaggerating. I mean, I mean, he's an entertainer, right? Did you see the video? I think you showed me. Yeah. 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 He seemed like he was really afraid of heights, but it seemed yeah. like he was putting on an act. It didn't really phase me. I mean, I went on the longest uh, zip line. They said in the world in Mexico, but I think there's like five different zip lines where they say it's the longest one in the world. The Toro Verde Tirolesa. If you guys didn't know, Tirolesa is zip line in Spanish. Tirolesa. It was the longest in the world, mm -hmm. and now it was recently beat by a place in the United Arab Emirates. Uh -huh. right? Yeah, I don't want to say the name of the uh, zip line there. I don't know if I have it um, right, but it was that one, um, the one that is now the longest in the world, was also developed, developed by the same company that... Um, built the one here in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. um, by like Toro Verde, it's the name of the um, company. So, 
And that company, they have other things at the Adventure Park. That's kind of the highlight, is if you go on the, now the second longest zip line in the world. Uh, but it's a really cool area. There's other things to do there. And it's in an area of Puerto Rico that I'd never imagined before we came to Puerto Rico, that there was a part of the island that looked like this. It's in the mountains, tons of trees. It just looks like endless forest there. And it's really cool, really cool. Okay, um, we have some questions, but should we keep going? Oh, um, oh yeah, quick announcement, then we'll do a Q&A. We see you guys are, are leaving us some questions, so we'll get to those in just a minute. Uh, if you have more questions, um, yes. you can start typing them, and I'm going to go all the way up to the comments, and we're going to start working our way down. Okay, I can start talking about that if yes. you want to look at the questions in mine. Okay, so... Mai and I have been dreaming up this idea for so long that we're going to do retreats. And these are immersion retreats where we take you guys on like a week-long excursion in some place in a Spanish-speaking country, and we're making it happen. So if you've been following along, we have already announced and sold out most of our first retreat that's going to be in Guanajuato, Mexico, Guanajuato City our favorite city so far in Mexico. We haven't vi visited the entire country yet, but so far Guanajuato takes the cake. It's absolutely gorgeous and we have, we had 10 spots available. Eight are now sold out. So we have two spots left. If you are interested in joining us, we're closing uh, entry for our first retreat May 2nd? Mm -hmm. May 2nd. And so you can go to TravelSpanishConfidence.com if you're interested. March. This is, yeah, this isn't March a hard 2nd. sell. I, I feel it. March, March 2nd. 2nd. March 2nd, sorry. Because May 2nd is like two days before we go. The day before go. the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Sorry, March, March 2nd. March mm -hmm. 2nd. And uh, this is going to be just such a good time. Um, we're not trying to hard sell any of you guys. This is just about what an amazing experience it's going to be to be in Mexico doing all the the things we talk about in our videos ordering food talking with the locals making small talk practicing your Spanish forcing yourself to practice Spanish we truly believe that there's no better way to improve your Spanish than to just put yourself in situations where you have to speak Spanish full immersion so that's what this is all about if you're interested and then you have us to help you along the way yep. if you get stuck yeah we're not just setting up a group and oh you guys have fun we're setting up activities for every day classes for every day it's going to be a really good time and we already know that we're going to be doing other retreats in the future so it'd be really cool to see uh where you guys would like to go if you can't make it to this one maybe just leave us a comment what other countries you'd like to visit or maybe other parts of mexico that you'd like to visit because maybe we'll do if this one goes well and i think it will uh maybe we'll do two or three a year See how it goes. So let us know. Okay. Questions. Ah, this is a comment. It's not a question. Someone from PR told me that their school books are in English. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, we have to check on that because we don't we don't know. There's a high school pretty close from our house. Uh -huh. So we're gonna have to go ask yeah. the students. <laughs> and I think our friend Fernando told us that everyone takes English classes from like the start. Yeah. From it from what sense. I remember, yeah, because yeah. yeah. everyone, like, under forty, under fifty, maybe mm -hmm. their English is really good. So mm -hmm. um, I can see why they want to use it. Just mm -hmm. I just want to use my Spanish too. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Puerto Ricans speak much faster, right? Good. Yes, and it's not only that they speak faster, but they cut up like the ends of. Pretty much every word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that makes it even faster, or that makes it sound like it's faster. Yeah, and a, and a good um, term to know in Spanish is that they comen las letras. Sí. Uh, se comen las letras. Se comen las letras. It's like like they, they eat the, the letters yeah. um, to mean they, they don't say all of the letters mm -hmm. in words. So oftentimes the ends of words, like S's especially are just like non-existent. Or well, like the words that end in A-D-O, like um, tostado, A-D-O, ado, they just, they don't say ado, they say just 
Total. 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 So they just change mm -hmm. a bunch of words. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think um, my favorite example is from a video. We talked about this a little bit. Uh, someone here said to us, para los tostones. But he says it like, palo totone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> takes, takes some getting used to. Yes. Saludos desde República Dominicana. Ramoncito, ah. saludos. Queremos mucho ir a la República Dominicana. Nuestro vecino yeah. está aquí cerca. <laughs> Our neighbor. Yeah, yeah. The Dominican Republic is not that far at all from Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we heard that there are some ferries. Um, ferries that go from San Juan. Used to be from like Rincón, which is closer but from San Juan that go to the Dominican Republic. So I'd really like to do that. Yeah, It'd be yeah. cool if we could go for a weekend, a weekend. or a week or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you talk about the high schools there? Uh, oh, yeah, just like, just like we said, there's a high school not too far from here. Maybe we should just go out and yeah. interview the kids there. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. And they wear uniforms, right? Yeah. If I remember correctly. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, just like in Mexico, um, pretty much all school children wear uniforms in Mexico, right? Like the public schools? Or yes. is it just... Yes. Okay. Till um, public and private, all the way until um, high school. Yeah, okay. everybody wears a uniform, or at least just a, a shirt and then jeans or whatever you want to wear. Yeah. But maybe an interview with them would be good just to mm -hmm. see what school is like in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, the dollar value is the same. Yes, and yes. That's our currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll probably add that to one of our Puerto Rico videos mm -hmm. about differences or things you didn't know. But uh, yeah, a lot of people, I mean, everyone uses the dollar here, but a lot of people call it the peso, especially older people. They call it peso. peso. So if you say, uh, how much for that bread? I went to the bread shop um, the other day and I said, how much for you know the piece of bread? He said, un peso, yeah. one dollar. In, in Mexico, that'd be, that'd be a pretty cheap piece of bread, <laughs> one peso. Spain in the summer, please. All right, that's, now we're talking. That'd yeah. be cool. Do a Spain retreat. That'd be cool. Maybe not in the summer for you. It's really hot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I, I've been to Spain. I was there like 12 years ago or something for a school trip. And we went in the summer and it was hot. But a dry heat. Um, it wasn't crazy humid like it gets here in Puerto Rico. Uh, but that would be fun. I think we need to scope it out first and then we could have a retreat there. So yeah. I personally, this is not a promise, but I really like to try to get to Spain sometime this year. I mean, it's the beginning of the year, we've got some time. Maybe we could pull it off. <laughs> try not to do just all Puerto Rico and Mexico. Like I said, we're trying to go everywhere, guys, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing about the way we travel is, too, that we don't like to just go and visit a place for a few days or a week. Mm -hmm. We like to spend a few weeks maybe a few months in a place and that's mm -hmm. what we want to do we want to live in the places we're telling you about we want to experience the culture we want to meet the locals so yeah. that we can really tell you things about the the country or the places we're visiting yeah we're not just collecting flags or we can say oh yeah i've been to this country that we spent a few hours on a layover in or a day in uh, for a couple teaching Spanish, it's not really fair to just show up for a day or two and, and act like we can tell you all about the differences in the culture and traditions and language in the country. So we're slow travelers. We're extra slow travelers just right now while we get my citizenship, which is another reason why we're here in Puerto Rico. So, Guys, if you have more questions, um, let us know. We have mini immersion mm -hmm. bitter current i'm a mom traveling to mexico for six months alone with my two kids eight and eleven with minimal spanish we hope to learn a lot arrive in Mar march 19th awesome good for you good for you bitter current that's um that's really cool i imagine you're getting lots of feedback of people warning you that that's not a great idea and i i would for the most part ignore that obviously you just have to be um 
you know, aware of your surroundings and, you know, uh, keep your, um, what am I trying to say? Just be smart, street smart, right? Uh, there's no reason to be afraid. And I think travelers get hear a lot from their friends and family that the whole world is a very dangerous place. It doesn't matter where you're going. It could be Mexico, it could be Colombia, it could be Puerto Rico. And we hear all the time how dangerous all these places are. And we've lived in them and it doesn't seem like they're nearly as dangerous as what people make them out to be. So good for you. And she's also asking, what neighborhood would you recommend a mom and two kids to stay in Guanajuato? Affordable and safe, who will have no vehicle. You oh. really don't need a car in, in Guanajuato. No. no. Yeah, if you can find a place near downtown in Guanajuato City, everything is walkable. And that's one of the things we just love about the city. I mean, your legs will get a good workout. But uh, if you haven't checked out our friend Erin's Travels, uh, or Erin from Erin's Travels, you should check her out because she moved her family, her husband, her daughter, who's a toddler, and pets to Guanajuato City, and uh, they love it there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, have you visited Bacardi or other distillery? No, we haven't, but we want to. There's another uh, very um, famous rum here that people drink all the time. It's the Don Cu. And they also have a destilleria here, and we wanna we wanna go check it out. The thing is, we still haven't found a car, so we're getting closer. Yeah, we just opened up a bank account. Yeah, um, I thought now we have we now we have an offshore bank account. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it sounds like, but it's uh, the banking system is separate from the U.S., mm -hmm. so technically we have an offshore. Thank you, Count. I just think that sounds funny. It's like a like a James Bond thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spain, maybe Basque region. It's cool. It'd be Basque. Basque country. Yes. That would be awesome. Yes. Yes. We. Spain is high up on our list for obvious reasons, right? Like Spanish comes from there. We get a lot of people from Spain commenting on our videos, trying to say that the Spanish in Mexico isn't pure or something um, and that's, we've never said like Spanish from Mexico is the best one yeah we've never said it is pure uh, but it's just interesting and part of the point of the channel to notice the differences language is always evolving all languages are and you know the Spanish that they speak in Spain nowadays doesn't sound a lot like it did 500 years ago same with any other language but we want to go there because yeah the language comes from there and has influenced the world and in the a big culture. way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we will go yes um uh, what countries are the best to learn spanish for study abroad or something like that would you recommend pr for study oh it's kind of like what we're saying right um i don't think there is one country that's the best but it depends on what you want to do with the language. For example, if you live in the US, if you travel to, let's say, Mexico or Colombia, or if you really want to visit Puerto Rico, then maybe you should start there. What um, Spanish makes sense to you? Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, like, you're taking some lessons now, and sometimes they give you vocabulary from Spain that you have never heard and that you're probably never gonna use, maybe until the time when we go to Spain. Yeah. Um, but for you, it makes no sense right now to learn or to worry about the, the conjugation of, uh, vosotros. of, yeah, of vosotros that and they things. Only use in Spain and yeah. some other countries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. For you, it makes sense right now, maybe to learn um, Spanish from Puerto Rico because we're mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, but if we were to be moving to Spain next month, then yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just... So depends on your interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if we could give some examples, I think big. Most people will study Spanish in Spain, Mexico, Colombia, Ecuador. Costa Rica, those are popular countries for people from the US at least, mm -hmm. and Europe. Uh, a lot of Europeans go to Spain to study Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'd say those are probably the most popular. Mm -hmm. But all depends on your interests. What's your intent? Why are you learning Spanish? Do you want to live in Puerto Rico? Be a good good place to go and study. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what's your opinion on the R and L switch within Caribbean Spanish? Ooh. It's tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, what catches me off guard is how much Spanglish is taking place. You, I didn't think it would trip me up so much, but when you're not expecting a word in English and then you hear it pronounced with a with a Spanish accent, it can really throw you off. It's like Hangar. I think the first time I heard that, I had no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> you can deduce what it means if you see it written down or you think, okay, how would, how, how would that be spelled? It has hang in the word, like hangar, hang out. Um, but throw that in the middle of a sentence or a conversation um, and you're not prepared for it, it can, those th types of words can... Yeah, out, like yeah. we also, we follow a few um, Puerto Rican um, Instagrammers and you know we sometimes watch their stories and the things they're doing here and there's this couple they were talking about something they were doing and they were really excited about it and the guy says estoy pompeado and I was like what <laughs> you guys guess what that means pompeado 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 con, yeah. con o oh. I think so yeah pompeado yeah that's what it sounded like. Yeah, so. it's it's pumped. Yeah. So like, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like pumped with energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never, you'd never hear that in Mexico. I've never heard it in Mexico. No. Yeah. No, but yeah. that happens a lot here because, well, you know, it's part of the U.S. and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of the things, like people watch TV and it's in English sometimes and just like the newspapers or sometimes you know magazines and stuff like that the media is often both english and spanish so they yeah. just tend to merge yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> okay uh, okay craig craig dry says proper spanish is spoken in spain i would say what do you mean by proper Right there, yeah. Huh. And Sasha was getting pumped. Pumped, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's an interesting conversation um, about the you know the true Spanish or the proper Spanish, where it comes from, because the equivalent we can look at. I'm not sure where you're from, Craig, uh, but if you look at it, it's like comparing American English with uh, British English or. Um, so is one better than the other is it fair to say everyone should learn british english because that's where it comes from or that uh, or because that's the best or from that's yeah mm -hmm. should we go and study english in england to uh, get the true sense of the language i mean you could argue yes but lots of media um, is in American English and so the same thing can be said about Spanish a lot of media comes from Mexico mm -hmm. and so does that make it the right Spanish I, I wouldn't say so either I would just say you know it depends on what you want to learn what your intentions are with the language they're all just different ways to communicate right mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. exactly. um, I'm half Puerto Rican I grew up in Iowa Oh, Living cool. Saludos. My mother never taught me her first language. I'm struggling with learning Sh now at 23. Shaina? Is that how you say her name? Shaina. Shaina. Mari. Mari. Okay. Awesome. Well, good for you for deciding to pick up Spanish. Um, 23 is definitely not too late. Yeah. And uh, you probably have some, some uh, uh, a bit of a head start, even if you don't think so, because I imagine, you know, you probably heard your mother speak Spanish at some point right so you had some early exposure that actually helps so uh, good for you, good for you. <laughs> saludos desde el Isla Encantado dicen. La, Isla Encantado. La, Isla. La Isla del Encanto sí. yeah, uh -huh. did you guys yeah. know that Puerto Rico has that uh, is that a nickname 
It's like a, yeah. Slang? Can, no, no, slang. Like a, no, no, no. Slogan or yeah. it's like the La enchanted isla del island. Encanto. La Isla del Encanto. Mm -hmm. um, uh, la, la, la. So, and yeah, 23, 23 is a good age to start learning a language. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're starting to go over. Maybe we'll answer one more question. Uh, Sh Shaina said, I was curious on your thoughts of never being taught by a parent who was born. I guess we touched on that. Yeah. Um, I learned Spanish as an adult. If you haven't seen that video, it's uh, how I learned Spanish mm -hmm. as an adult here on YouTube. And I went through my process. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty fluent. I, I mean, my and I speak Spanish all day, every day. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable living in Spanish-speaking countries, and uh, I'm sufficiently fluent to get by. And and uh, I, I don't think 23 is is too old to to learn, even if your parents didn't teach you. So Was that the age it. when when that you were when we met? Probably about that, maybe 22 or 23. 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so it's not too late. You can do it. <laughs> it's fine if your parents don't speak the Spanish here. It didn't teach you Spanish. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So cool. Uh, we went a little over as we usually do. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. We appreciate your patience as we work through these um, technical difficulties. It's tricky doing live streams. I mean it's a whole one thing just doing YouTube videos which requires a whole different set of skills but these live videos and they're live. Anything could happen, right? Right. We can't be just like, okay, cut. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> There's plenty of times I wish I could have edited the spaces between the things I'm saying because that's what we always do, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't want to waste you guys' time, but this is a, kind of a fun format to just speak directly to you and, mm -hmm. and uh, answer your questions. So if you enjoyed this, give us a like. Leave us, leave us a comment after the video is over. And if you haven't already, hit the bell button so you don't miss anything. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more coming. And we have more videos from Mexico that we haven't released yet that will be out soon as well. So yes. <laughs> again, we hope you stick around. It's not all about Mexico. It's not all about Puerto Rico. If you're here to learn Spanish, we're, to hear, we're and here to, to help. to travel more. Yes. <laughs> Saludos. Nos vemos a la próxima. Adios. Adios.